Righto, well it's Easter Saturday and um, I'm a little bit over the dogs and lots of things we've been doing today so so I'd just uh, steal a bit of time to come into the, uh, uh, the the mess. Well, actually it's a little bit cleaner than normal, which is good. Um, having a bit of a look at the Lunar Electronics now, these were, have a look at the size of the heat sinking on these guys. They were really, <coughs> excuse me, very well built and um, this is the... Um, just trying to see that uh, 10-150p now um, from memory um, these things could take anywhere between it didn't really matter whether you put 10 watts in or 20 watts in it, it they pretty much gave you 100 watts out on FM and they peaked uh, you know a little bit higher than that on sideband um, but the thing about the lunar electronics was um, their receive preamp they were a really uh, amazing receive preamps on these they they did a a really uh, really exceptional job so um, let's just have a bit of a look um, so I just sort of hook up a, a quick bird meter uh, with about 20 watts coming in there off this little <laughs> this whole little two meter radio shack um, I probably could have grabbed another radio just the lightest thing I could find <laughs> but anyway um, so let's uh, let's now turn the uh, switch on uh, so we've, we've got basically an FM mode at the moment receiver off for the moment and uh, the meter should go pretty hard bang over the other side, which it does. So we know we've got 100 watts of FM carrier there. And um, unfortunately, I don't have a slug bigger than 100 watts, so which is a, you know, a bit of an issue um, when uh, I need to uh, get a larger, larger slug for, because uh, I've got some 500 and kilowatt amps uh, for two meters and I uh, need to be able to you know, effectively test those. Uh, but um, yeah, you can see, <coughs> excuse me, um, that uh, they, they have no trouble getting their uh, the 100 plus watts. Now, just when you're setting one of these learners up or any two meter amp, uh, there's a lot of variations to um, input drive power, um, SSB usage, um, even coaxial lengths, lots of things. We've, we've seen it all over the years. And um, uh, so pretty much, um, you know, you need to optimize your uh, two meter, seventy centimeter setup with um, you know some nice high grade uh, cable, etc. Uh, in this case, um, two meters VHF. You know, not so stringent, uh, but still, you know, still lossy uh, if you're you know running the wrong uh, wrong cables and etc. So you know, definitely some decent uh, cable between this amplifier and over to the um, uh, over to the antenna, etc. Uh, we're obviously just on dummy load at the moment, so um, it's not really too much of an issue. Um, when I was saying before about how long these are, uh, when I take the bird meter out of the way, I mean, they really are lengthy. Um, I mean, they're as long as a, you know, a, a TS520 or something, because I know what I sit on this bench normally, and, you know, <laughs> so they really did do a very, very good job. All right, let's just set up for some receive signal, and let's just show you how the preamp works. Uh, actually, we should be set up. Let me just have a look. We'll have a look. We are, we are, we are um, at a very low... Um, Let's, let's bring in a little bit more than 0.5, okay. Now, now, what I've done is I've just put in about uh, 50 microvolts. And hang on, let's have a look. Okay, <laughs> probably you noticed on the last um, little excerpt um, when we took the preamp in, the signal over here actually went down. Now, a little trick to lunar amps and a lot of these... Um, really high gain um, preamps if they've been sitting around for a while you will need to um, it, it, look most people will think that it's a little fat over here uh, that's gone and, um, and and look and often it can be don't get me wrong uh, but let's turn this uh, let's get rid of that tone for a minute um, but uh, often it's actually here um, that this has just come out of alignment um, if it's been sitting around now this amp hasn't been used in a very long time and, um, uh, and I actually had to remember myself just for a split second and I thought well it's not going to hurt for you guys to see what's inside one of these beasts they are really well made um, they, they really are um, that KLM um, style strip line there which um, uh, it's a lot of these amps were modeled on a very similar uh, almost RF parts <laughs> strip line that were made back in the day and they're really heavy duty they're quite uh, quite good amps anyway so um, what we're going to do is we're just going to put that annoying tone back on uh, and uh, we are going to turn the preamp on 
Now, I'm going to need to back that off a little bit. Now, I've got it in a better position there because you can see I'm getting quite a lot of gain there. So, but let's just take that back a bit there. So we've dropped it back to about 1.58 microvolts. There. Now, that's the sort of gain we want to see because we can see it's very evident. And what I'm doing is I'm just, well, better show you. We're just peaking the input here. And it normally will be this fella here. Uh, if I can get my little tool to sit in there. That's better. Okay, it'll normally be this little fella here, and you'll be adjusting. See how very fine, quite fine actually, and, and this was not very far out of adjustment. But if it's out of adjustment, it'll actually look like the FET is attenuating. So when you've got it, that's pretty much peaked there. So when you've got it like that, we now can throw the switch here, and we can drop back, and we get basically no preamp on, and look at that. And we're actually getting a preamp working quite well. Um, a couple of other things I was going to note with these amps, um, because I had to remind myself. Uh, so I dug out uh, number one a circuit, which reminded me a little bit um, uh, of how they did things. But secondly, was uh, now this this documentation covers quite a range of their various uh, amplifiers that, that Luna made back in San Diego. But as you can see. Um, that um, the 140p was rated at 140 watts output, the 160, 160 watts. Um, this is obviously a 150, 150 was it? I think from memory. <laughs> so I'm going to look down. 150p, yes, yes, all right. Um, but what I want you to notice, uh, like we're putting 20 watts of drive into it. Um, now, um, input levels, as we see over here, um, 25 nominal, 40 watts max to get your, um, your 150 watts, let's say, you know. Um, so, at the moment, we're driving it with half the power, um, and let's turn that tone off because we're pretty happy that we, we know that that's working all right. Um, we're driving it with half the power, and we're getting 100 watts out of it uh, quite nicely. Uh, so, you know, it stands to reason when you put take your drive up to, um, as they suggest, up to uh, 40 watts for the 140, so maybe even a tad more, but I wouldn't. I would say 40 watts would be about it uh, to get your 150 watts. Um, me, I'd be happy to run this thing at 100 watts all day long, you know, put in 20, 25 watts worth of drive and, um, you know, it wouldn't even get warm, but that's me. Uh, but they're a, um, a nice amp. Uh, let me put some screws back in it. And, uh, but yes, it was worth having a bit of a look there just to show you what happens here. Uh, by the way, I did pick the output as well. Um, not much movement in that, to be very honest. Um, uh, but um, anyway, nice for you to see just how well made these things were. They really, really were. Okay, so all back together again and, and looking really nice. Um, nice to drag out a bit of paperwork for this as well, just to remind myself of some of the details. And we turn this little 20 watt radio into a 100 watt radio. <laughs> but yeah, just as I said before, you definitely um, can take that drive up to uh, substantially more. And as you can see, and over probably over here is where we really want to look. Yeah, nice. I think we need to set that crow up a bit better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not quite what we want to see. Anyway, anyway, that's the um, Luna uh, 150p. Uh, good luck finding one of these. Uh, they really, really are hard to find. Um, this is going to a good mate of mine in South Australia who has levered it out of me. Um, we've done a bit of a swappy deal on some um, uh, some parts that he has over there, and I thought, ah, oh, you know what? Um, I, I, look, I've got larger amps than this, so I'm okay for what we've got to do here, but. Um, I'm a bit sorry to see it go, I've got to be honest. Um, although I'm glad we had a quick look at just um, setting up that um, uh, receive preamp. Just And that's the thing, if you've got a bit of test equipment, you know, it's such an easy job to do. Uh, it, it's it's just so nice because you can sit there attenuating and making sure that you've got the right levels. And, and uh, uh, I know people will say, oh, I just do it by ear, but eh, yeah. I, I much prefer having, um, you know, some... Uh, reasonable test equipment to uh, to feed a signal in just to make sure. All right, 73s, this has been the Luna 150p 2 meter amplifier and um, needs to get some of the dust off it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ivan, you'll enjoy this. All right, all the best. Cheers all.